It's December time and you know what that means. Holiday specials to rake in some extra views. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Since I'm not doing one big campaign, this video is only gonna get like 200 views. Anyway, I think we can all agree that 2016 might be one of the shittiest years in all of our lifetimes, so there's not much to feel joyous about, is there? Normally I would have put a but at the end there, but... 2016 has been so awful that there is no bright side to look on. So, let's just pretend like we're all happy and merry and go on with the most terrible holiday-related crowdfunding campaigns we can find, shall we? It's funny how these concept videos I do, whether it be April Fools, Halloween, or Year in Holidays, always result in nothing but terrible campaigns, at least for video games. The tabletop games are usually pretty good, but the video games are terrible with bad campaigns. I guess that's the same for life, really. Mostly shit with a few good things sprinkled in. We'll begin with Christmas games, because as you probably expect, that's where a vast majority of the holiday game development spirit went. Slightly more surprising is that all of them, except for two, have failed. Although even saying that doesn't do any justice, thanks in part to our first game, Moonbreaker for Christmas, which succeeded with one backer for $15. Yes, I am intentionally setting the bar low for the rest of this episode, but only because Kickstarter itself has done so. Yes, Moonbreaker for Christmas had a total budget of $15, reached at the absolute last minute on day 9 of the 10-day campaign. Chances are it was developer Willow Reagan's mom, or the developers closed the project the second they got that backer. This was the project's third campaign at the end of 2013, originally titled Project Gertz and seeking $50,000. The Christmas aspect of the game was cobbled together for this campaign, it seems, as none of the others mentioned Christmas at all. The real kicker here is the campaign page itself. It's a confusing mess of a developer who really doesn't know what they're talking about. Moonbreaker will be the first Project Gert thing that will not be called Project Gert. Moonbreaker will replace the existing game as the establishing incident for Project Gert. Moonbreaker will add story and dialogue and lore beyond and including what you find in the book. Moonbreaker already has art, algorithms, and dzidzig patterns which far surpass the original Moonbreaker game or engine that have been used in recon and collected since the original Moonbreaker came out in February 2011. This game has since disappeared and the developer's website no longer exists. What were you expecting? Our next ho-ho holiday game is Santa's Delivery. Now, Santa's Delivery as a developer's diary is actually kind of interesting. The campaign is nothing but developer Michael Pierce talking about how the game was originally a prototype and how he made that. But this isn't a developer diary, at least it's not supposed to be. It's a Kickstarter campaign, and as a Kickstarter campaign, it's terrible. You need to actually talk about what the game is, why you're on Kickstarter. You know, give us screenshots and better yet video showing what you have. Instead, the pitch video is Michael talking to the camera for a few minutes, and the only bit of gameplay is one tiny screenshot showing what looks like an Atari game. A Kickstarter page needs to give potential backers enough information about the game you're working on to inspire confidence in them to donate money to you. Simply saying, hey I made a cool prototype for a game about Christmas, give me some money now please, will never be enough, and it only cheapens the site as a whole, whatever your intentions are. And don't get me started on developers who say the risks of development are minimal. Game development is always a time-consuming, risky prospect on any level, whether you have a team of a hundred or going it lone wolf style. There have been countless one-person developers on Kickstarter who met their funding goal saying it'd be no problem, only to have some unforeseen issue arise like a massive game-breaking bug they can't solve or, I don't know, some health issue in real life that they can't afford to take care of. There is always a risk in game development, and that risk grows on Kickstarter for both the developer and backer. Anyway, enough of me rambling, let's instead talk about Defenders of the Claws. There's not much on this page, so we might as well move on to- Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's more like it, right. Yes, developer Atomic Chimp Games has an unfortunate passion for deleting their Kickstarter campaigns once they fail. 
which all three have. Their first campaign, Feeble's Fate, is completely gutted, with its campaign page text removed in favor for, I don't know, an ad for another of their games, and its updates completely removed. The same happened to the first Defenders of the Claws campaign, though its lone update is still intact, at least for now. Their final attempt at Kickstarter in November 2014 still seemed to have all of its components, luckily, and it's the best campaign we've looked at yet. On its surface, it's got everything that makes a good Kickstarter. Plenty of details about the game and its developers, screenshots of the game, and a reasonable funding goal. However, once you further look into it, and not that much further mind, things get a little clearer. Those details are actually paper thin, with most of it only talking about the release date and controls. The screenshots aren't of any gameplay, but instead concept art, promotional images, and even menus and the funding goal is too low at only $500. Perhaps the scariest thing about this campaign is the risks and challenges section, which states, As experienced game developers, we know what it takes to complete a game and get it launched. So, nothing will prevent us from launching Defenders of the Claws this December. This biggest risk is in the success of Defenders of the Claws, is for it to not reach the people who would love to play a fun game like this. We need your help to spread the word, so that by the time this game is launched, everyone will know about Sprocket and the Kringle 3000 and their mission to defend the North Pole. Yeah, uh-huh. You can see why this only collected the $150 now. Our final Christmas game is also the only current active campaign, Banta Claus, and it's the only one that looks somewhat competent, yet it's no less dubious. Besides the low funding goal of only $63, the developer, Matthew Jackson, changed the Kickstarter page. I know this because when I took a break from writing my script yesterday and came back today, the page was completely different. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any video or screen captures of it because I didn't expect that to happen. Oh, Kickstarter, never change. It's strange, because this newly updated page is significantly worse. I was about to praise it. There is much less information in screenshots now. But it seems, given a recent update, this was part of some unexpected new plan from the developer getting cold feet. And you can bet your ass I'm screenshotting everything now. Basically, Jackson says the green light voting was a disaster, so he decided to completely change the game by making it bigger and adding new modes and new details and a confusing new release plan. When is this happening? Well, as of right now, it's still in the works. At the time of release, I plan to have Banta City, which will be the standard world, and Banta Claus, which is the world that you have all backed this project for. However, Banta Claus will now have two game modes instead of one. Time Attack and Arcade. Time Attack is what the game was originally, and Arcade is a wave-based mode where the elves fight back. I will update Kickstarter, Itch.io, and Steam once the game is ready. Nothing says confidence like a developer suddenly changing everything and not having a solid plan for that change. The course of action, if he was really serious about revamping the game, would obviously have been to, you know, cancel the Kickstarter, make the changes, you know, get your ducks in a row, as it were, and then come back later. But I guess he just wants to capitalize on the timing. So with all that fuss, what is slash was Banta Claus slash Banta World slash Banta City? It's a game where you run around an open-ish world and kill elves. That's it. At least, according to the new Kickstarter page that has only a scant paragraph of information. Merry Christmas, everyone. Since there's more to the holiday season than adorning fir trees with tatty ornaments and men sliding their girth down chimneys, let's take a look at some of the other holiday games. Is what I would be saying if there were any other holiday related Kickstarter video games. But there aren't any. Nothing for Hanukkah, nothing for Kwanzaa, no Maulid, which I forgot to look up how to pronounce before I started doing this VO, and you can forget about anything involving National Maple Syrup Day. I tried looking on Indiegogo too, but that was just hell on earth. Instead, we get tabletop games, Jewish Wisdom Ball, a Jewish alternative to the Magic 8 Ball, and Mensch on a Bench, add more Funaka to Hanukkah. Now, despite the cringe-inducing names, both campaigns were massive hits, 
raising $13,000 and $22,000 respectively. I don't want to include them just because they're Jewish, but because they're Hanukkah related. And honestly, the Jewish Wisdom Ball one only came up because the description said it'd be a nice Hanukkah gift, so... I guess that's all I need to say about that. But, but, Mensch on a Bench is about Hanukkah because it's supposed to be a fun Hanukkah game. It's not actually about Hanukkah, it's just the, the creator wanting to make it about that. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I just don't really have anything for you. Um, I, I came up with this idea to do a holiday special a while ago. It's pretty obvious, right? But once I started looking into it, it's just... Bleh. All these campaigns are fundamentally the same. Not enough information given, developers who are too cocky, and ridiculous funding goals that are either too big or too small. And not to mention they're all about Christmas and absolutely nothing else. But to cut these developers some slack, they're pretty limited by the holidays. Christmas, Hanukkah, the New Year's all make pretty good movies because you can do whatever you want genre-wise. But what can you do with any of those holidays in video games. What would the game be about? What what would the story and the gameplay be for a Christmas game other than killing elves or elf bowling or anything involving hurting elves? Whenever there is a half decent holiday game, which is never, it always feels tacked on, doesn't it? So either holiday related games just aren't a good idea or somebody hasn't come along yet who can figure out how to make it work. Is Kickstarter going to be the place that it finally happens? Will Kickstarter or any crowdfunding site be where all the good holiday games come from? You would think so, wouldn't you? Crowdfunding sites are supposed to be the place where new developers, or old, come up with new ideas and experiments. But what we've looked at today, not counting the other horror shows that I didn't have the stomach to talk about, there's no evidence to suggest that's true. There are no interesting Christmas, Halloween, or Thanksgiving games, nothing about Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or any of the holidays. So without anything left to talk about, all I can say is happy holidays to everyone. We're currently planning on a lot of fun things for this channel in the coming year, including some new shows, so keep an eye on that. Oh, and one more thing, no more of these multi-campaign episodes, yeah.